Hey there, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a special treat for all those who have been eagerly waiting for the second part of top HTML interview question series. You guys flooded my inbox with so many requests for a follow up that I couldn't resist making it happen. Not only have I included more questions on HTML, but I've also covered other exciting topics like CSS and JavaScript in the coming videos just like you asked. So buckle up and get ready to expand your knowledge with this top interview questions. Let's dive in. So the first question in today's list is what is W3C? So W3C stands for World Wide Web Consortium, which is an international community that develops open standards to promote the long term growth of web. It was founded in 1994 by Tim Berners-Lee, the inventor of World Wide Web. And it is comprised of members, organizations, staff and public participants who work together to develop web standards and guidelines. W3C is responsible for developing and maintaining the technical standards for web, including HTML, CSS and many other technologies. The organization's mission is to ensure the web remains open, accessible, and interoperable for everyone around the world. Now, moving on to the next question. What are some advantages of HTML over its previous versions? HTML5, the largest version of hypertext markup language, offers several advantages over its previous versions, some of which are Multimedia support HTML5 provides native support for multimedia elements like audio and video, which was not available in previous versions. This means that developers don't need to rely on a third-party plugin like Flash to add multimedia to their web pages, making the development process simpler and more efficient. Next is improved semantics. HTML5 includes new semantic tags like header, footer, nav article which makes it easier to structure web pages in a more meaningful and organized way now we would talk about what is html semantics in the next question but till then i would just like you to know that this helps search engines better understand the content of web pages resulting in improved seo that is search engine optimization the third point here would be mobile friendly HTML5 is designed with mobile devices in mind and includes features like responsive design and support for touch events, making it easier to create web pages that work well on mobile devices. The fourth point here is better performance. HTML5 includes several new features like local storage and web sockets, which allows web pages to load faster and provide a more responsive user experience. The final and most important advantage here would be cross-browser compatibility. HTML5 is designed to work across all modern browsers, reducing the need for developers to write browser-specific code. So the next question that we will be covering today is a very common and basic interview question that is how many types of heading does an HTML contain? So, HTML contains six different types of headings which are represented by H1, H2, H3, H4, H5 and H6 tags. These tags are used to define headings of different levels of importance or hierarchy on the web page. The H1 tag represents the highest level of importance or main heading while the H6 tag represents the lowest level of importance or subheading. The headings are typically used to provide structure and organization to the content on web page and they can also help to improve the accessibility and SEO of a website. So, uh, as I said in the previous answer, that HTML5 has new semantic elements like nav and article, you might get another question asking what is HTML semantic or what is semantic HTML. 
so the next question that i will be covering is what is a semantic html so semantic html refers to the practice of using html markup to reinforce the semantics or meaning of the content on the web page in other words it involves using html tags to indicate the purpose and structure of different parts of web page rather than just their appearance for example instead of using div or span tag to create a block of text or group of inline element semantic html encourages the use of more specific tags like b for paragraphs h1 to h6 for headings nav for navigation menus article for independent pieces of content and so on by using these tags the content becomes more structured meaningful and machine readable which can improve accessibility seo and overall usability of web page in addition to making the code more readable maintainable the semantic html also helps to separate the content from the presentation layer which can make it easier to update the design of website without affecting its underlying structure or meaning now as you can see here i have provided an example where i am show, showing using how you can use html semantic in a wrong way and what is a proper way of using the semantic html so in the example i have used a div tag to create a heading which is absolutely wrong it might give you the desired result or desired output but semantic html would encourage you to use an h1 to h6 headings to create a heading content so the next and final question on today's list is what are attributes and how do you use them in html attributes are special keywords that can be used to provide additional information about an element they are added to the opening tag of an html element and take the form of name equal to value pairs where name is the attribute name and the value is the value of the attribute attributes can be used to control the behavior and appearance of element such as setting the size or color of text adding a hyperlink specifying an image source some common attributes used in html include source for specifying the source of an image href or href for specifying the destination of hyperlink class for specifying a class name for an element an id for specifying a unique identifier for an element now uh, i have listed down uh, an example below here it shows a image tag which has a source attribute and an alt attribute so in this example the source attribute is used to specify the source of the image while the alt attribute provides alternative text that is displayed if the image cannot be loaded so that's it for this tutorial i hope you found it informative and helpful if you have any questions or feedback please feel free to leave a comment below also i would like to hear your suggestions on what topics or question you would like to cover me in the next video your feedback is important to me and it helps me create content that is relevant and useful to you so please let me know in the comments below and i'll be sure to consider your suggestions for the next video thanks for watching